Are you trying to detach yourself from people that you used to idealize? Or because you feel that this isn't who you are anymore and you want to move on from certain relationships in your life? Well, let me tell you something. It is possible if you set your mind to detach yourself from people that don't align with you anymore. The reason we are so attached to people is eventually craving that sense of relationships as we human beings crave relationships. We all the time want to meet people and show them our interest in them. So this video is going to tell you exactly how you're going to detach yourself from people. But before we do that, I am going to start by telling you what are the reasons we get attached to people, we idealize people. Then I'll give you some signs that show that you are probably too attached to certain people in your life. And then lastly, I'm going to tell you how you can stop being attached to people and detach actually from people. So let's start with the first chapter of this video. What are the reasons why you are so attached to certain people? The number one reason we human beings are attached to certain people in our lives is that we are craving a sense of connection. Like we feel that by showing to people that we are too attached to them and that we find them perfect and, then, and that we idealize their lives, these people are going to stay close to us and going to be our friends forever. And we human beings are meant to have connections with people. We are not supposed to live alone in the wilderness. We're supposed to talk, to chat, to eat together, to laugh, to, to have that sense of, you know, relationships in our lives. The second reason that makes us attached to people is avoiding our own vulnerabilities. That may seem surprising, but when you are connected to more people in your life and you start idealizing those people and attaching yourself to them, you kind of lose the sense of identity that you have for yourself. You kind of start, sometimes you even start acting like that person because you are given them so much value in your life and you feel like this is the right thing to do. So sometimes it could be your defense mechanism that is just trying to protect you from being hurt by becoming kind of codependent with your relationships, idealizing your friends, being like, oh my God, she's so beautiful. She has amazing hair. It can also be the mirror effect. Sometimes we idealize people because we see in them who we would like to be. I remember when I was this insecure girl, I don't know if you, uh, if you've got, you have watched guys, the, the vampire diaries. I was so much in love with Elena Gilbert because she was that person that I always wanted to be. Well, I watched this in high school, so it dates back to so many years ago. And then when I started like exploring my path and my passions and who I was, I realized that it just because she, she tells me who I want to be in a, near future or I just see in her things that I would like to have. The last reason that is really important that you know is the need for validation. We feel that sometimes when we're not that connected to people probably they are not going to validate who we are and they were they will joke and start making fun of us and, and feel like we're not worthy enough, we're not good enough. So this is also a reason why you idealize and get attached to people. Now, this is the second chapter of this video, which is the signs that show that you are too attached or you idealize so many people in your life or just some of them. The first sign that shows that you eventually idealize people is you make them your own priority. So I'd like you to remember how many times you have made someone your priority, whereas you had a deadline, you had a work to finish for the next day, but the other person just asked you to finish something for them. And you were like, you know what? Yeah, sure, no problem. This is such a dangerous sign because you get to put yourself next and putting yourself next is such a huge mistake. If you want to be that version of yourself which glows all the time and and is just like confident and you know gives this aura and energy to people then this has to stop right the second sign that is you constantly compare yourself to others comparing yourself to others is a sign that you're maybe to the person that you're attached to means that you're 
you feel unworthy, you feel insecure, you feel not enough for yourself. You think that the other person is perfect. You idealize her life or his life and you think they have it all together. But maybe this isn't really the case. This isn't the truth, right? The third sign is you feel intimidated and unworthy by these people. Oh my gosh, like I'm just thinking, how can you make someone feel this way? And how can you make yourself feel this way about yourself? I mean, this is the most dangerous and torturous thing you could do to yourself is feel unworthy and get intimidated by someone that you 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 feel like they're they are amazing. And the fourth sign is disregarding boundaries and emotional dependency. Oh my god. Sometimes when you are so attached to someone, you probably think that they <clears throat> they don't have a life aside from you. Their life is just focused on you. Like there is nothing else except you in their lives. But let me tell you one thing. It's not true. And and then you become emotionally dependent on that person. Like Whatever that person does to you, you feel like shit. She's just going to tell you one single thing that's gonna make you feel like so bad for the rest of the day. And how can you give up this power of making someone play with your emotions and feelings? I mean, literally, this isn't doable, literally. Let me give you another sign, which is going to be the last sign. You kind of make your own needs pass last. That's it. Like every time you have your own needs, you put them aside and you put the other's needs first. These are the few signs that show that you are emotionally attached to people and you idealize people so much that your life sucks now. Now the real question is, you're gonna be like, Alice, how can I stop being attached to people and idealizing people in my life? Well, don't worry, I got you. I have the answer. Let me tell you just a quick story in here. When I was dating this guy, I'm not going to get into details about who he was or... At, at some point, well, I was so vulnerable during that period because I had just left my husband and uh, I, I kind of wasn't ready to date anyone yet. And, and this just, you know, showed itself the universe was like you know what let me teach you a lesson you're capable of moving on and i was like okay sure no problem so i met this guy and i i i literally started being codependent so my whole life was put aside even if my life was so freaking exciting i always have things that happen all the time like i have this vibe with everybody that i talk with i get to like to meet people very easily and to talk to people easily. But I was like, you know what, let me just focus on this relationship for now. Even though I wasn't even planning on this like thing at all. Time has passed and the surprising thing that I realized was that I have given up my life for his life. Well, he didn't ask for that because he's such a dependent person. He didn't want me to give up anything for him. But the reality is I did it for myself. I hurt myself by focusing on someone else's life. So I realized that literally I was focusing too much on him. I was focusing on my energy on our relationship that I got left aside. I felt like I abandoned myself for someone. And this isn't my personality. This isn't who I am. Like I've been all the time like being this wonderful independent woman and I've been all the time trying to be myself so how come I gave up myself like and then I started reconnecting with myself little by little getting to know the reasons why I did that and you know what I started embracing my own vulnerabilities because I went through depression through that during that period I felt like I felt abandoned my by my family because they didn't, I'm sorry, I'm getting into details about my life, but I hope that this is going to inspire you guys to, to, to move forward from what you've been living. I felt abandoned and I didn't want to get into that vulnerability. But the moment I raised awareness, and probably you're going to ask me, Alice, how did you raise awareness? I'm going to give you something really simple. Like you're going to start with a very simple journaling prompt that says, why do I feel like I'm abandoned? Why do I feel this way? And trust me on this one. The moment you start writing down a few feelings, 
maybe tears are going to pour down like really maybe so many ideas are going to come to you and you will realize that literally all the answers are within you like i cannot give you the answers guys if you think that this video is going to be the answers for your problems i'm sorry to say it no the answers are within you this is what i do when i coach my clients or people i just tell them look i'm here okay i'm going to guide you through this process i'm just going to be a facilitator kind of i'm going to motivate you whenever you lose your motivation or anything but i am not going to be the one who's going to do the work for you if you think that life can change because you're watching this video life isn't going to change because you're watching this video okay your life can only change because you decide to make it change okay certain things in life cannot be changed by anyone other than yourself i created a sort of a balance in my life after raising awareness after tapping into my vulnerability after embracing my imperfections and like all those experiences it was kind of doing the shadow work i don't know if you guys heard of the shadow work but the shadow work is something hidden inside of you that you keep just inside because you don't want to tap into it you don't want to go deep it's like trauma okay like trauma is like this and let me give you an example you just put this like this okay and then since you are too afraid of dealing with that what you're gonna do is cover it up right cover it up and it's going to be like to, to, to go all around your body and you won't notice anymore because when you take off that shirt that you were wearing it's not going to be there but the truth is your skin has absorbed it it's within you this is exactly uh, what happened to us when we're not trying to embrace our vulnerabilities it's still in there but just hidden somewhere and it's not going to disappear like like you know in a blink of an eye don't think that this is the way it happens until you tap into it and understand it and embrace it it's not going to go i was like you know what this happened for this reason the fact that i went through that depression is only going to make me stronger and going to make me share more experiences with people and and show them that even the most positive people that you know can go through some shit in this life this is what i'm telling you guys it's never too late to do better with your life like you just gotta believe and i believe that you can okay after having created my balanced perspective i started well i was always someone who set boundaries to people okay even to my own father mother parents i always tried to tell them okay look there are certain things that you do, you don't have to discuss with me and i'm not going to discuss with you but then i started doing this in my relationship because the fact that you realize that you're too attached with to someone doesn't mean that you're going to break up with them or you're going to stop that friendship from being okay and existing okay if you're talking about your other health then just train and try to find a way to deal with this so eventually i started putting some boundaries and setting some boundaries and i was like you know what this is my boundary this is the other one i don't want to be crossed like whenever i want to have my me time don't even try to to fit in my me time and i started saying no to things that i don't want to like why would i want to go to a tennis match while i don't like tennis like that's not the truth well i do like watching tennis but i i do like playing a little bit i'm not a pro or anything but yeah there are certain things that i at first it was like whatever like whenever some some of the people i got attached to would invite me i would be like oh yeah sure let's hit it baby i would never say no and then after a few months after a few um, sessions of work on myself and doing the shadow work that I was talking about to you I right I realized that things can literally happen and change and it was surprising to me to, to, to see how how I changed through that period so this is just the way you do it honey this is the way like there is no magic like wound that could change literally it's not like you thinking okay you know what i'm gonna sleep tonight and i'm gonna wake up tomorrow and everything is gonna change in my life nothing is gonna change in your life if you think that okay because if you don't set those boundaries no one will people d hate boundaries okay people would like to walk on you and like be the trash and they just walk on you okay they don't care the moment you set boundaries people are going to value you more the moment you start to prioritize your own needs before anyone else's needs 
that moment everything's gonna shift. Trust me on this one. This is going to be a surprise because this is another point. Prioritizing your own needs before anyone's needs is literally something that could change your life. Because people view you the way you see yourself. People see you have the perspective that you have about yourself. Let me tell you, if I see myself as the shitty little bitch, girl, whatever, everyone's going to see me that way. And I don't blame them because this is the image. This is the, the energy that I'm giving to them. But the moment you start like giving them that energy, when you walk into a room, like people stare at you and you're feeling like, oh gosh, they are jealous, blah, blah, blah. No, why would you say that about yourself? When I walk into a room right now, like, and people look at me, I just be like, okay, you know what? They are impressed. They, they, they look at me. They love my hair, maybe. They love my beauty. They love... They love my energy, my aura. I'm like, this is what I say when I walk into a room. Instead of just trying to sabotage myself, I encourage myself. I show to myself that I'm great, that I'm amazing. Well, something that I would recommend that you do, guys, which is going to seem very surprising, is to unsubscribe from anyone that is making you feel unworthy, from anyone that you're not aligned with anymore. Let go of the things that don't serve you anymore. When you're attached to people, you're all of them going to try and find reasons like why your life sucks, why you, you, you're not that amazing, why you don't have the hair that you want and stuff. And this literally happens by you going online and talk, like checking other people because nowadays I can show you the picture that I want of my life. If I want to tell you that I'm living the best life ever, like I mean, I can show you that. But the truth is, this isn't true. I have bad days, I have good days. Well, most of my days are great. Like this weekend, my, my weekend was, was shit. I, I was literally like, fuck it. I don't feel like myself this weekend. I, I, was, I was struggling like, but you know, when you are so well connected with yourself, the magic happens. Cause I felt off, but I don't just give up when I'm having a bad day, you know? I, I went for a walk, I tried to connect with myself. I tried to listen to a podcast that I resonated with. And you know what? These days I've been unsubscribing from people that I don't want to see more of in my feed. I want to see positive stuff in my feed. Why don't you do that as well? Why don't you just try by having a positive feed and positive things on your Instagram account or YouTube account? This is what I want more of in my life, in my life. I want more peace, more good energy, good energy. Something else, which is going to be, uh, let's say, uh, before the last point is Focusing on your personal growth. Well, there are a lot of people that are gonna tell you personal growth is just like for one day and for one once in a lifetime. But you know, I'm gonna tell you something very surprising. Self-growth is for everyone in that, like, like every time, okay? At every stage in your life, whenever things are not going the right way, you have to do some self-growth. Whenever you feel like something is off, something is not going well, you have to do some self-growth. This is the way you succeed. There is no other way for you to move forward. You have to set goals, okay? Setting goals is such an amazing and a huge part of you as a human being because setting goals is not just only going to make you feel like you're doing something meaningful with your life, but it's also going to make you feel like you're meaningful, you're amazing, you're a dreamer, you're a goal achiever. You know, the competence, confidence loop, the more you develop confidence, you develop competence. The more you develop competence, you develop confidence. This is the way it works. You pursue your own passions. People are interested in people who are interested in their own passions. Just by doing that, you will realize that little by little, you detach yourself from people slowly but surely. This is just what I want for you. Working on yourself is not hard. Working on yourself needs you to be committed and then need to be, you need to be kind to yourself. You need to be passionate with yourself, compassionate. Have that compassion that you have towards your friends and family and husband and girlfriend. You have to have that towards you because you're only a human being. You're not like a robot, okay? You have feelings, you have emotions. The last thing is going to be communicate openly. No matter what people are gonna say, okay? No matter what people are gonna think of you when you say those things openly, let them think that, okay? People are going to be whether agree or disagree. That's the rule of life, okay? If there isn't black, there won't be white. If there isn't the sun, there won't be the moon. If there isn't the night, there won't be the day. So things are, the opposites should exist. No matter what you do, they should. So you have people who are going to love you. You have people who are going to hate you. 
and that's okay okay embracing haters and embracing their energy is just going to make you stronger okay you're gonna know what you want more of in your life and what you want more less of in your life okay if you like this video so far i would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel click on that button down below baby come on do it because you're just going to support me more so that i can make amazing content for you guys if you want I'm going to share my goal with you. I want to quit my job for real this time. I just want to be a full-time uh, content creator where I motivate people. My goal is really to, to, to be this person who is going to impact people's lives positively, who's going to make a difference, at least with one person a day. This is all I want and I believe in you. I believe that the universe is abundant enough for every one of us and I believe we all have the power to tap into that. There is literally like no one who's going to tell you, you know what, you cannot be rich, you cannot be awesome. In 2025, you can literally become the version that you want to become in your life. So why don't we start today together, hand in hand, and let's do this together.